I'm here in Lisbon with Fujifilm who have just announced this, their brand new flagship camera, the X-H1. It sits above the X-T2 and X-Pro2 and brings a whole load of new features to the brand's lineup of cameras. So let's find out a little bit more about it. Now this camera is built around a 24.3 megapixel X-Trans CMOS free APS-C size sensor and the X-Processor Pro processor. That's the same combination that was found in the X-T2 and the X-Pro2. Now that decision to use the same sensor and processor again may surprise a few people in their new flagship model, but actually they're capable of some fantastic image quality. With the electronic shutter, a top burst shooting speed of 14 frames per second is available with focus locked, while with the mechanical shutter selected, 8 frames per second is possible. This is the same continuous shooting speed as the X-T2, and while not the fastest offered by a CSC, remains very competitive. It should meet the demands of most sports and wildlife photographers with ease. Burst shooting with live view has now been increased to 5.7 frames per second, while the X-T2 managed 5 frames per second. With a new flicker reduction option available, Fujifilm has increased the X-H1 suitability for shooting under artificial lighting. This will be welcomed by those capturing sports and events indoors. Just as the X-T 2s optional power booster grip increased the device's performance in a number of key areas and featured a headphone input, so too does the unit designed for the X-H1. This grip holds two batteries for an increased 900 shot battery life and extends video recording times, decreases startup times and enables a faster mechanical burst mode. Battery life without the grip is a slightly reduced 300 shots in the X-H1 standard mode, down from 340 in the X-T 2. The camera has the quietest shutter sound of all the cameras in the X-Series range, making it an ideal tool for environments where quietness is required, such as capturing animals in the wild, theatre performances or weddings. It's not quite silent, but it's close enough to not be a distraction in situations. Now this camera has the same focusing system as Fuji's X-T2 and X-Pro2 as well. That's their intelligent hybrid system which uses both phase detection and contrast detection points. However, Fujifilm state that it is now much more capable in low light, focusing down to minus 1 EV, while the X-T2 was rated to 0.5 EV. The performance of the device's continuous focusing has also been improved over the X-T2. Touch focusing can now be utilised via the device's rear display. This continues to operate with the camera held to the eye, while a focus joystick is also present for speedy control. Now one of the biggest game changers found in this camera is its in-body stabilisation. It's a five axis system and something that not too long ago Fuji themselves said wasn't possible with the XF mount. This 5-axis system can compensate for up to 5.5 stops of shake with some optics including the XF 35mm f1.4 while with many others it manages a still highly respectable 5 stops of shake reduction. The addition of this feature not only differentiates the X-H1 from the X-T2 but also means that Fujifilm can now go toe-to-toe -to -toe with competitor CSC systems which offer this functionality to varying degrees. For those users looking to pair the device with telephoto lenses, this in-body image stabilisation could prove invaluable. Now in terms of its form factor, this camera is a massive departure from Fuji's previous approach to its X-Series line. It's much more like the GFX actually, it's, uh, it's almost DSLR style in its design. It's got a big deep grip which is going to counterweight all those really long lenses well. So if you're a sports or wildlife shooter and you're using you know, primes, this is going to be ideal. A 25% thicker magnesium alloy body and the use of scratch protection black paint means that this camera should also be much more durable than many previous X-mount siblings. In addition, the camera is dust resistant, water resistant and can operate to temperatures as low as minus 10 Celsius. It's a larger device in all dimensions than the X-T2 and weighs in at 673 grams with battery and memory card that's 166 grams heavier than its sibling. This means that if you're looking for a truly compact system camera, the X-T2 will probably remain the much better suited option. Just like the GFX 50S, the X-H1 has a sub-LCD. Its 3-inch, 3-axis, 1.04 million dot rear monitor is the same size and resolution as that found on the X-T2. However, it's now touch sensitive too. This enables touch control of focus point, shutter and the camera's quick menu. While 100 frames per second refresh rate and 0.75 times magnification are shared by both the X-H1 and the X-T2's EVFs, the new flagship carries a more pleasing 3.69 million dot resolution, which results in a great user experience. In fact, it's one of the nicest electronic viewfinders that I've ever used. So I'm now going to turn you over to our videographer behind the camera, Chris, who's going to talk you through this device's video features. Okay, so video spec. Well, Fujifilm will be the first people to tell you that this camera is the most capable camera they've made to date for video. It can do 4K UHD in 8-bit 420 at up to 30 frames per second. 
You can actually go a bit wider as well. You can do cinema 4K, so 4K DCI, up to 24 frames per second again internally. And that's both up to 200 megabits per second, which is a pretty impressive data rate for a camera of this size. Should you want more cool information, you can output 8-bit 422 through the HDMI output as a 4K signal if you want that extra detail. If you want to do HD, you can do a slow motion effect of HD up to 120 frames per second to really exaggerate that movement. You've also got Fujifilm's log profile in there, F-Log, which can capture up to 12 stops of dynamic range too. On the side, you've got your microphone input at the top on the camera body, and on the battery body, you've got the headphone out as well. Fujifilm being known for their film stocks, you've also got the Eterna film stock built right into this camera. So if you're not wanting to grage and you're looking for a very quick turnaround, you can shoot with a baked in look, which we've used for this project today. So everything that you're seeing in this video has been shot on this camera. So we've spent a day at Fujifilm's press event here in Lisbon with the X-H1, and it's a really interesting device. You know, not only have Fujifilm users now got another handling option to consider alongside the X-T2 and X-Pro2, you've got this DSLR style form factor, but you know, with in-body image stabilization, all those extra video options now, the, the company have really opened up their line to a whole new type of user. If you're the kind of person who sometimes shoots stills, sometimes shoots video, then this is going to be the device best suited for you in the X-Series line by pretty much a country mile. So for more information about the X-H1, visit wex.co.uk.